just want to talk about making some money without actually investing any. There's a project I'm working on at the moment which is quite a large one, um, which will involve some money at some point. Um, but I'm not really talking about it because it's still mid-development and there's multiple people involved in it and it's software linked to facilities management. But the, the weekend, uh, I probably mentioned, well I know I mentioned that somebody was bugging me, man, can you, how do you do this with VC dial, blah blah blah. VC dial is an auto dialer. Um, it basically can manage a ridiculous amount of telephone calls as well as multiple agents. I mean, we, we had 45 agents on the system. Um, what was our limitation was actually the telephone lines, our internet connections. That's why we had more than one internet connection because we had to split the servers so that they could use more than one line. Um, if I'd gone for a more advanced server system, I could have got a set of cards so that the server could manage more um, internet lines. But uh, putting that to one side, so I'm talking to the one guy about that and somebody else contacts me through my Facebook page saying, Matt, how can I make money in the Philippines and the one to make the move? And I'm like, I say, look, the call center industry needs clients because um, he was on about buying my call center. I said, look, I can get you the client. I, I can get you the call centers to do the work. Don't invest heavily yourself because I've got people ready to do the work already. I've got people that will, you know, it's much easier to get 20 or 40 call centers to do the work for you as a, an intermediate um, or what they call a broker, but just play the game fair. You want them to be making profit. The reason I dislike some of the brokers is they do it to the point there's no profit for the call center. They, they know they're pushing the call centers into uh, bankruptcy in many ways and some of them just don't pay anyway. They'll run it for like, I mean I know at security there were some call centers that run for a month, never got paid one cent and then the, the guys that were brokering and selling the deals just disappeared because it was all online. So for me, getting good clients is the hard bit. Um, and it's, I mean, if I was in the Philippines now, it's where I would actually be concentrating because I've got the call centers there, I've got a call center myself, but there's other people who will simply, quite happily, take the work and do it and pay you a large percentage well, not a large percentage, they'll pay you a large amount of money for doing it. What am I talking about? Right. If you take 10 agents for call centers, like a friend did, and he was just the intermediate, he was making $1,500 a week on that. Now, if you turn around and take that from 10 to... 10 call centers in 20, uh, 10 agents in multiple call centers. So you've got 10 in one call center in Cebu, one in a 10 in a call center in Makati, 10 in here, there, and everywhere. You could end up with five to ten thousand dollars a week easily. And uh, this is what I explained to the guy yesterday. Now. While I'm still rabbiting, rabbiting on here, the guy that wanted the Visidile system and is struggling to set it up, I'm chatting to him saying, well, what are you actually doing? And it's like, well, we're, we're doing this. We're doing, we, you know, we're dealing with um, power and gas. And we're doing, you know, um, deregulation. Uh, okay, do they use foreign coal centers? And he's like, I'll have to ask. So, Instantly, there's a couple of options just opened up. Firstly, they may do um, international work, but some co some companies don't like doing it these days because of the um, phone bashing that goes on with a lot of call centers with the telemarketing and stuff. But the other side of that being, 
that the guy that wanted to live in the Philippines and needs an income, he doesn't need a call center. He could actually be working from home, doing the telemarketing and sales himself, or with a few other expats, because this is another idea I was working on previously as well. And I know it actually works because there's I've got some friends from the Netherlands at the moment actually working in a call center together. There's five of them. Um, they are the foreign foreigners for a call center. They are actually dealing with direct clients that the call center can actually do from the Philippines because people don't speak Dutch very well in the Philippines unless they're from the Netherlands. So they are basically a foreign call center in the Philippines, which is where some of these expat jobs exist. Now if you take that, so, because <coughs> this, I'm just explaining the stuff that's happened over the weekend. So you've got a guy that wanted a visit dial system that has now turned into a customer almost at the moment. And you've got a guy in the Philippines that wants to go to the Philippines and live there. Those two people, I can network together. Um, obviously, I'm not doing this for free because you're now in my business business bit of my world. Um, so I will become the mediator in there and help both. The guy on um, the Visidal stuff will tell you already, he was quoted originally $2,500 off somebody from Craigslist to set up a auto dialer system. He was also quoted... $50 an hour for servicing and setting up remotely. He was also quoted $250, no, it's more than that, $500 for an old second-hand server. Um, I've got him doing visit dial himself um, because I'm sitting, I mean, I've sat having Valentine's dinner, which is a bit naughty, but I'm just saying, look, this is what you need to do, this is what you need. And he's just gone away and done it. So you've got opportunities there, um, if you understand Visidal. And I'm not going to say it's easy, because it was easy for me, but I always get told off for saying things like it was easy. Um, so, but the, there's a lot of money in Visidal. A lot of call centers use it. A lot of call centers that want to open up need it. There's a market for Visidal. Um, but like I'm saying, once you get this relationship going, I've got call centers already stacked up in the Philippines want more and more work. I've got, like I said, somebody approached me on my Facebook asking, Matt, I want a business, I want to be able to make money in the Philippines. And I've now got an opportunity that I can put forward for him. And I've got the guy that actually wants the Visidal stuff, plus he needs a voice over IP provider. I have one. Um, so there's lots of bits and pieces like that. <coughs> now we're on to Spain. Um, and the reason I'm wearing my glasses and don't feel so good this morning is because I've been setting up that visit aisle on my laptop. Strongly advised don't buy HP laptops. Absolute pig. Um, they seem to be in love with Microsoft. Um, to put the visit dial on there, I needed a spare partition so it had a dual boot. They went out their way, along with Microsoft, to create four partitions that they didn't need, they need one extra one for themselves. Um, so when it boots it won't recognize all of the, it wouldn't recognize the, the Linux one. Um, getting all that crap off the laptop was a nightmare. Um, I had to, in the end it was easy to take the hard drive out and format it on another machine because it wouldn't let me format because it was a protected drive and it's like because the Windows 10 on it is rubbish. It really is rubbish. Um, see, the thing is, I'm a, I'm a computer user in the sense I actually use my computer. I use Excel. I do stuff in programming. I do stuff with um, photography and other bits and pieces. I don't use apps in the sense of phone use and that sort of stuff. Um, you'll find my phone doesn't have many apps on it because most of the apps I don't see any value in. Um, there's a few that are useful, but the majority aren't. So I wanted the computer. That's a computer. Windows 8 and Windows 10 have filled the Windows systems with absolute junk. Um, they were bloated to start with. It's got worse now. 
But anyway, enough ranting. But the problem is, HP, which is why I'm saying they annoy me as well, is the fact is they don't support the drivers because they only want you to use Windows 10. So my laptop doesn't have any drivers to actually change to something else. But I still needed to format the drive because I needed to remove some of the partitions they put on there. Um, yes, I need a backup partition, but they, they've added extra ones that don't do anything. And yes, they did it on purpose, because it stops you getting Ubuntu or something else as a dual boot. Um, but now, it might even just be dual um, Ubuntu, because I'm about to get rid of all of it. Uh, that's right there, April, April newbies here. I think April's locked the doors, it won't open, because I haven't... So that was that bit, and then what we've got here in Spain, Steve turned up with the electronics, I mentioned before, you know, the, the cookers, the um, kettles, the shavers, all the, all the Philips branded stuff, but he sold it before I could actually get any of it marketed, so he's gone back to the UK to get another load, at the same time I was, he needs stuff to go back to the UK to sell to him. So I've already had a knock at the door yesterday because we've managed to get a supplier of oranges and lemons. Um, there's other food and stuff that can go back to the UK. So that is already a new avenue that's opened up. Sending fruit, to, fruit and veg to the UK and bringing back electronics and um, disposable gloves you know because the funny thing is with this obsession with the, the EU regulations a lot more people wear gloves like mechanics wear surgical gloves because the surgical disposable gloves because of things like the oil in dermatitis years ago you'd always see a mechanic covered in oil these days they're not allowed to so they get through a lot of gloves on a regular basis so we're now looking at how to market to the the local guys needing the gloves um, the dentists the um, hospitals etc because we've got access to container loads of gloves um, on top of that we've now got another apartment that's come on the market in, in La Mata for sale and for rent so that's another thing we're going to go up and have a look at as well later this week once we've got the keys um, to do a video and do a walkthrough of the location and get that on the market. So, although sometimes it seems there's not a lot going on here in Spain, there's a lot of stuff goes on in the background. I don't really talk about it too much, purely because until something actually bears fruit, there's not a lot to say. But I just wanted to give you an idea of how you can make money out of low investment or no investment. The call centre stuff is very, very low investment unless you actually start your own call centre, which I'll be honest with you, you don't need to do unless you really, really want to. Or you've got a client that is investing the money um, and wants their own call centre, so you're actually going through the, we'll set it up for you and you just pay me a fee. Uh, route, which some people have done already. There's a talent agency in Cebu, for example, that deal with, you know, talent. You know, they, they deal with all the bookings and stuff for going to movie, uh, what was it? Like the, they book, they deal with all the bookings for things like going to get seen on a film set, to see if you're good enough to be in the movie. They deal with all that sort of stuff and local theatres and all that sort of thing. So it's, a, it's fairly intensive because it's the whole of the US. But anyway, just wanted to throw a few things on the table as we're now heading home.